I just remembered. I suck at math. Don't use a banana to measure things. What the hell? Bro, everywhere I go with this thing, it just flips the ground upside down, digs up a bunch of roots, and apparently electrical cables. This is not great. What a douchebag. <laughs> I mean, who even installs electrical cables at like five centimeters deepness? I know exactly who. No, not me. I go at least seven centimeters. That would be my grandpa. So I knew this line was here. It had no power, so we're safe. Check out the Soviet cable casing. Badass. Well, to fix this, fish cars, take some note from moi. Add some steel to your piece of crap plastic products. Steel is great. But anyway, guys, welcome to another dozer video. So last time we bought this thing, that video up here, 
maybe. We did a bunch of um, checking, not much of maintenance to be honest, just checked a bunch of things. And um, I believe we also crashed into a shed. That was not my fault though, although the jury might be out on that still. But anyway, in this video we'll be focusing on the maintenance part, mostly it's just checking the oils and if the oils need to be changed or I need to add more, then we'll do that. In addition to that, you guys gave me a lot of useful information about this machine. So we'll be going over all of that. Also, there is this one guy called Steve Sealed, who has given me an absolute ton of information on that thing. He even sent me some type of manual thing this thing which I also printed out I translated it into English and it's like freaking 600 pages printed on both sides I used my boss's printer to print it out it took like 45 minutes of constant printing I hope that he doesn't watch this video that would be awkward but not everything is in that manual thing, so it's still missing a couple of bits. Anyway, if you're interested in old equipment, then I would suggest to check that guy's channel out. I will put it down in the description if you want to do that. I also printed out one of those um, list things. Basically, it's just a to-do list, what I'm planning to do. And... I mean, there is a lot of stuff to do, so if this video kind of gets too long, then we'll make it into a series. But uh, anyway, enough of pointless crap talk, let's get to work. First things first, uh, make it all nice looking and stuff. Because it takes a while for this thing to warm up or something. Great, that also works. Surprisingly, a lot of stuff work here. I really forgot their sock here. If you want your sock back, then send me an email. I will leave it on the roof there. It should dry up by the time this video gets out.
so uh, super hot right now. Yeah, I just finished cleaning it and it's already drying up. I have a feeling this is gonna take a while. Especially when washing the undercarriage. I'm just gonna rewash a lot of parts over and over again because the dirt just kind of flies up everywhere. stuff down here important stuff by the way this is the spot where you check the gearbox oil I did not find this the last time but that's the one This is my baby fun. There's a lot of gunk down here. Wow. I wonder how much would it cost if you throw a bulldozer into a car wash. That would be interesting.
that's a lot of gunk. For the first time we can see the frame of this thing. The entire tractor is on uh, on some spring system. Hmm. Not bad. That takes care of the one side. Let's just do a before and after. This side was a lot cleaner than the other side. I guess going at it with a jackhammer in the middle of the winter, I managed to remove a lot of dirt. There's no dry spots left on my shirt anymore. So the amount of gunk be beneath this plate, man. I hope I don't have to remove this. Because this is like 10 millimeters thick, guys. Probably weighs like, I don't know, 100 kilos at least. It's quite a big plate. I'm gonna take a picture of this camera right now. So you guys can see, but anyway, I'm gonna let it dry a bit, change my clothes, probably pressure wash myself as well. I think it's clean enough for now, but I'm pretty sure I'm not finished yet. Okay, that takes care of number one. Engine oil. Did not cheapskate out. Got like 60 liters of the stuff. Should be enough. Before I proceed, I would love to have a bit more clearance down here. Neck deep in dirt right now. I got these blanks here. Been sitting here for like two years. 50. Three meters long. Perfect. Close enough. Definitely better, maybe like 10 centimeters. At least the machine is quite straight right now. Guess I found the coolant leak. We got coolant here. 
coming from somewhere here, but we'll deal with that later. About the engine oil, maybe some of you remember, that thing was severely overfilled. So you can see that this thing is severely overfilled over the maximum. Also, the oil pressure, it was very low. It was one, it was sitting on one. Now by the book, one is absolute minimum. You don't wanna go below one because you can, um, well, mess up the engine. Then I started wondering why was it so overfilled? It could be three things, either the coolant, which kind of seems unlikely because the oil is not milkshake. It's kind of golden, kind of dark, something. Steve suggested that it's probably the hydraulic fluid. Personally though, I think it's diesel fuel. Either it's leaking through the main pump or the injectors. I've had the machine for about five months. And during that time, the engine oil level has not increased. So maybe I can just get away with replacing the oil and then I will closely monitor the situation. If it starts going up very rapidly, then I need to figure out what's going on there. Right now, I'm just gonna do a oil change and gonna leave it at that. Now, while I was doing the tree booing thing, I did pull about 20 liters of that watery very low viscosity liquid from the stump. I mean, that thing was like water. Let's be honest. Not gonna sugarcoat it. And I added about 10 liters of engine oil back to the sump. My only goal with that was to see if I can get the pressure up. And I did. The pressure went from 1 to 1.5. Nicely stayed there. So I'm hoping with the full oil change I can get the pressure above due, which would be perfect. Now, if it was coolant, it would be total milkshake right now, but you can clearly see it's black. Let's see what we can see. No oh, crap. <laughs> oh, freaking hell. Come on, man. I just came from the sauna. What the hell? What happened to this thing? And I thought my gloves are gonna save me. Boy, was I wrong. Oh boy. Looks like we do have some metal on the magnet here. I wasn't really be surprised. The, I mean, the machine is what, like 40 something years old? You tell me, is this a lot? Or. Uh, I don't know. Looks pretty good. At least next time when I do an oil change, uh, I know uh, I cleaned it up. <laughs> Definitely doesn't look like a milkshake. Look, looks like your standard oil. But, uh, like I said, beforehand, I removed about 20 liters of that stuff. So, in reality, we had this amount of oil in that engine sump. I should probably have it tested, like, if it's diesel or hydraulic fluid. But uh, I'm thinking it's diesel. It's It smells like old oil, so you can't really... Can't really guess it by the smell, but uh, 
I just think that the hydraulic fluid, it would not be so watery. I may be wrong on that though. I just like wash it 10 minutes ago. And I'm guessing this is the breeder. This looks pretty good. The main engine didn't have really have any issues with the breather. That was the bony motor. I'm already over maximum, very mildly over, because uh, I bought too much oil. Looks, looks like I have at least three years worth of oil. Check it out guys, what I just discovered. We got the hour meter here. Old Soviet hour meter. Closest I can tell it's uh, 1866. The one is not fully in the center, so maybe it's 866. Seems, seems not a lot. Okay, next up, let's focus on the filters. Engine oil filter. Should be this thing. Centrifugal filter ding. So you don't usually replace this stuff. You just clean it and put it back. It's not perfect, but it works. I'm always trying to use this. Yeah, almost lost this. It's okay. I have a giant Russian spy balloon under my dozer. Okay, anyway, let's open this thing up. At least let's try clean it internally. Man, I hope this thing is not too tight. <sighs> not happening. So the guy told me to remove this nut and then I should be able to get the other one out. But um, I think there's something wrong with this nut. It doesn't come out. I mean, it goes in, no problem. But uh, but it's just kind of it kind of stops on this spot. Yeah, I think the thread is messed up in there. I don't know, bro. Too bad I can't open it off, but I guess uh, this will also somewhat clean it.
It's definitely getting better. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. Already kind of scratched up the surface a bit. Don't really want to break it or anything. It's very likely that I can't really find any major parts for this machine anyway. So I don't really want to risk breaking anything. Uh, I would like to get in there and thoroughly clean the wall as well. It did wonders on my Solian tractor. After doing a thorough cleanup, the oil pressure its just kind of went from 1.8 all the way up to 2.7. Cleaning the filter, housing, it did wonders on that machine. Sadly, I can't get it open. So I'm pretty sure this is the turbo, turbo filter. Yeah, this thing has a separate filter for turbo. So according to the book, I need to completely remove it from the machine and then disassemble it. So this is the inlet port, this is the outlet port, this is the pressure uh, bolt. Uh, no idea, no idea. Probably not very healthy for the Durbo to use this type of oil. Well, at least it's better than nothing. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to replace this part out or you just clean it. Yeah. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just gonna clean it. I mean, it's uh, letting liquid through, so that's good news at least. Not sure what this hole is for. Mm, one moment. It's that thing, it doesn't say. I think um, it might be the valve block. There should be a spring and some ball in there. Oh, well, I can see the ball. The ball is right there. But um, why do I need to remove it? I'm pretty sure I don't need to remove it. No idea if you need to fill it up. I'm just gonna taking a guess here. That should take care of the Durbo filter. Focus on the fuel filter now. So this thing is supposed to refine the fuel before it enters the fuel pump. Let's start with that one down there. I mean, this one is pretty relatively straightforward. You can either open it from the bottom. I usually prefer to open the entire thing to make sure it's nicely clean in there. The best part is that you don't need to do this very often.
yeah pretty nasty in here but um, it's not fully filled and if you open it up from the bottom I'm pretty sure you're not, you're unable to fully clean it out properly I mean There is a zero here, right? why did they... Maybe it was leaking, I don't know. Looky looky guys, Santa, wonder what he brought this time. Let's go have a look. Get a lot of this. We got some glass guys. So the story behind this is that an apartment building went into renovation mode and they stripped all the old glass of the building. And uh, rather than this thing going to the... Where would this go even? Crusher? Anyway, rather than this thing going to waste, I get to do something with it. And this is just a very small portion. There is an entire mountain of these glass pieces there. Bro, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this stuff. Apparently there's like 10 times more than what he brought. Sadly, most of them will go to the dump yard. At least I got some of it. I'm betting I can use them somewhere. When dealing with fuel, always add new copper seals, guys. Man, that looks super clean in there. Squeaky clean, guys. I'm not even gonna bother opening the second one up. Oh, I guess we got a little bit smarter at least. So that one down there is the fuel refinery. And these two are the filters. Okay, I think um, one more filter to go. Hydraulic filter. Basically, I have zero idea where that is located. I think I found it. Well, Steve told me that it's not 100% sure, but it should be located behind this plate. I guess it would make sense. The hydraulic tank is right here. And also, all the filters are nicely located in one area. Only thing that is on the other side is the air filter. That's actually quite convenient. Yeah. Oil level seems to be on bar, but we'll check that later. I'm pretty sure it's fine. Last time I checked it, it looked like brand new. Well, well, well. How am I supposed to check the oil if it's just gonna flow out? Let's see what this does. Remove block three, drain oil from filter cavity. Remove bolts one, two, three. I guess that is the filter. Wash the filter with diesel fuel. Blah, 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 blah.
What the hell? My guess is that somebody played baseball with it. So clearly it's not the same filter that is in the manual. The manual has a metal filter and this is reusable but um, that's a paper filter. This I need to change out. This thing is just so stuck. Why is it stuck? The thing is like welded on here, right? The second one is freely spinning. Third one is nicely free. But the first one is completely stuck. It shouldn't be that stuck here. I, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, look at this, guys. The entire tube, it's bent. Okay, okay. Rusty, rust bucket. I'm guessing this has not been changed for a while. Really glad I decided to take a look at it. I mean, this right here. Bro, even the, even the Titanic looks better. We'll be revisiting this later. Don't have any of the filters. While I wait for the new filters, we can continue the work. How did I check it last time? I don't get it. I'm guessing this is a breather gap for it. Probably blocked as well. The hydraulic fluid looks pretty nice. I would say. Bro, I think um, I think there's water in it. it. Looks kind of milky. That would explain why there was rust inside the filter elements. There's also rust here as well. 
probably should change it out. I have no idea. I would love to get a bit deeper. Maybe I can remove this bit. Mm, need like a special tool for that. Pitting I can make one though. What the crap is that? But hey, if it works, then it's great. Well, that was embarrassing. Caveman tools, guys. Sometimes they work. Crusty grab. Yeah, that looks better. So what do you think guys? Should I change it out? No, it's not the um, best looking oil. That's for sure. But I don't think it's the worst looking as well. Well, compared to the new oil, it's pretty dark. Mean. Bloody hell, this thing has two hydraulic tanks. They're both connected with this hose. That's a lot of oil. Why the hell does this thing need so much hydraulic fluid? I don't get it. It only has two cylinders, like 100 liters of fluid. I'm guessing this is the oil, oil radiator.
basically I will change it out but later once I get the filter as well I'm guessing it's gonna be like about four hundred dollars to flush the both tanks but um, still cheaper than uh, getting a new pump anyway hmm. filters are almost finished gearbox oil Slap it. cheese It's here right now. The oil looks great. That's good. Oh, well, basically, Steve told me that uh, this is fine. It's a bit much, but um, not by a lot. Why can't everything be this easy? Why do I have to build tools to get access to some areas? But let's be honest, that's a lot more interesting content. I just love gleaning heavy equipment. It doesn't matter how much you clean it, it's still dirty. So this is the, the gearbox and the rear differential oil filter. Gonna be honest with you guys. This is probably the cleanest filter that the machine has. By the way, the hydraulic filter should be something similar. Such a bummer that somebody put paper filters on my machine. Check and check. Fuel bump oil. The fuel bump guys, just just check this out. The fuel bump. It's huge. I mean it's, it stretches from San Francisco to Mexico. This thing is huge. Let's go let's go check out the Soviet tractor fuel pump for comparison. This thing this thing is so tiny compared to that thing. I'm not really sure about um how the fuel bump is oiled on that machine but uh, on this one it has a separate spot for oil mm. okay guys um honestly i'm not really 100 percent sure well the only logical inlet port i can find is this one and also there appears to be some kind of a bolt down there i'm guessing it's this one by the way this uh, bump it does not have a primer bump. That the uh, manual bump thing that you bump fuel up. For example, the Soviet tractor does have this lift bump. You just kind of bump the thing to get the fuel up somewhere. Even in the manual, it's a pretty bad picture, but you can see a priming bump here. That's the giant nut back there and in front of it there should be a priming pump. So on uh, this location. But for some reason this tractor does not have that. I'm not really sure why. Maybe somebody uh, removed it at some point or some of them uh, came off the factory line without one. Maybe you guys have some knowledge into that theory. Because I don't have any knowledge on any theory. Mean. This will get the engine oil, by the way. Fill it until it overfills. Check Carino. Fuel gap fix. So on the fuel gap, there is a breather hole right at the top. The problem is that the rainwater can get inside the tank. 
and cause all sorts of problems there. Let's seal this cap, drill a new hole, also cover it with a nut. This is water, by the way. That looks like it was just painted. Credit goes to AC. Get we can feel valve leaking going on. Feel valve, feel valve. I don't see any leaks. Maybe that. Check the block thing. You guys reminded me that I forgot to check this, so let's, let's do it this time, I guess. Super clean. The seal is kind of busted there. It needs a pressure seal. There we go. Mm, maybe I can just kind of swap it on the spot without spilling too much fuel. That takes care of the engine, filters, almost, gearbox oil, gearbox filter, fuel bump, bunch of bony motor crap. Uh, focus on the bony motor now. It's down there. No way to, no way to access it. Maybe from there. Mountain of crap in the way. I'm guessing it's that one there, but I'm not 100% sure. It would be perfect if I removed this plate. But, uh, bro, I'm guessing with all that dirt, the thing probably weighs like 200 kilos. Yeah, this is like desperate measure. Last opportunity. I'm gonna try to avoid doing that. Yo, camera. Kus sa läksid? Ma ei näe siin üldse. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like mud. 
Oh yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's coming from mud. Yeah. Never mind. That, oh yeah, actually it looks really good. This is quite the ordeal. Yeah, you can see my access hole is not that great. Better not drop this. I'm pretty sure I can't find it anymore. Where's the hole? Dude, I can barely just reach. Yeah, I didn't think I got it. Think I got it though. Also, this uh, breeder deal is absolutely clogged. That's why it was spewing out oil from the drain block. Got to clean this as well. Same oil, by the way. 15 WD 40. Yeah, right on the money. Dead center. Basically, it's pretty good by now, but not perfect. Leave the thing in some premium gasoline for days. Okay, so while the breeder thing is um, sulking away in a spa, let's fix the oil rod. This bit broke off from here and I put some tape on the top to kind of ensure that the rod does not drop into the sump. So maybe we can weld this thing back here. Starship is ready for launch. The gearbox. The bony motors gearbox. This thing here. And this is the check plug. Yeah, right on the money guys. Dead center. Also the oil looks great. I wish there was more gearboxes on this thing. Apparently gearboxes are in good health. The breeders on this thing looks pretty bad. Check how dark the fluid has gone. There was one more issue with this thing. The joke valve on the carburetor. I, I don't know, I haven't really used it. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe it doesn't work, I'm not sure. But the problem is that from the gap, yeah, I need to pull this out, but it literally does nothing. It doesn't do anything.
literally does nothing. At least this thing moves. Eureka! I actually managed to fix something. Wow! That is quite rare. So that takes care of that, that, yeah, yes, bro. Guys, we are almost at the halfway point now. We still have a bunch of things to do though, and probably some of the bigger jobs. Next up would be the final drive oil, plus also need to check on the brake strings. Last time I remember, they were covered in oil. Now, in order to check the final drive fluid, I'm not even sure I can get it open. This gap here, on uh, both sides, requires a special key. And by the looks of that rust, I don't think anybody has ever checked it. Uh, just check it out, guys. That thing is completely rusted solid. It's not even funny. But I'm thinking, uh, let's pick this up in the next episode. At least we got the absolute done of work done already. And everything besides the hydraulic filters have been quite a smooth sailing. So in the next episode, I will sort out the hydraulic filters as well and uh, try to flush out the hydraulic fluid. 100 liters of it. Yay! But until then, thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one, ciao.